Donald Trump created some excitement last week when he suggested that he might abolish the income tax and replace it with taxes on imports. Understandably, most of the excitement came from the prospect of abolishing the income tax. Of course, the Trump plan isn't to simply abolish the income tax, it's to replace it with another tax. Moreover, the Trump proposal, like most so-called tax reform programs, is designed to be revenue neutral. That is, the federal government doesn't experience any actual drops in tax revenue and thus experiences no actual threats to its power. Also, Americans don't see any true drop in their tax burden under so-called tax reforms like this. Much of the excitement rests on the misconception that income taxes uh, result in getting rid of the IRS uh, or that income taxes will go uh, away entirely just by getting rid of the graduated income tax. Now, we could note that maybe a benefit of getting rid of all income taxes would be getting rid of the IRS, which, of course, monitors all of our income and just generally spies on us in a variety of ways. But the way Trump was talking about it, it's pretty clear that he didn't mean all income taxes. He just meant getting rid of the so-called graduated income tax, which about 60% of Americans pay. There was no mention of the payroll taxes, which pretty much all wage earners pay. That is the taxes for Social Security and Medicare. Everybody pays that. The IRS monitors that. The IRS enforces that. Unless you get rid of all income taxes, including payroll taxes, the IRS isn't going anywhere. And so that's something that uh, any sort of tax reform that says, hey, we're going to get rid of the income tax, but they don't mention payroll taxes, you're still going to have the IRS, and uh, it's, it's not getting rid of income taxes overall at all. So anything less than getting rid of all income taxes, including the payroll taxes, and you're getting the worst of both worlds in a Trump-style tax reform, because you're going to get more taxes on imports, which will drive up the cost of living, but you're not even getting rid of the IRS, so you're still being spied on by the central government, and all your income is recorded. So uh, that's, it's not clear there's any sort of real benefit there at all. All it is is the replacement of one uh, type of tax for another, with none of the only possible benefit of this tax reform, which would be getting rid of IRS agents entirely. Of course, even then they would be replaced with uh, customs agents who would still spy on a lot of Americans, but not everybody the way the IRS does. Now, uh, on top of this, tax reform packages have a huge potential for bait-and-switch situations. That is, oh, here, we'll, we'll abolish this tax and replace it with, other, the, the, with a new one here, but we'll just raise the taxes on the new tax, and then we'll get around to getting rid of the old tax. And you could see this, this playing out, right? Trump comes into office, he raises taxes, uh, taxes on imports. And this is, okay, well, in a few months, I'll then put in legislation to get rid of uh, the income tax. And hopefully he would then mean all income taxes, but that's not apparently what he means yet. So uh, yeah, good luck with that then, right? Oh yeah. So now you've endured the increase in the import taxes, but just wait patiently and we'll get rid of the income tax someday. We all know how that's going to turn out. You might maybe get a small decrease in the income tax, but it's not going anywhere. The only way a tax reform package like this makes any sense and is to be taken seriously is if the very first thing that happens is legislation to get rid of all income taxes. And only once that is passed, signed into law, and has a implementation date, can you then seriously talk about, yeah, quote unquote, replacing it with a tax on imports. That's the only way that this could possibly happen and not be a joke. Uh, unfortunately, it's very easy to do it the bad way, which is you come in and you raise a bunch of import taxes uh, because, and this isn't Trump's fault, but in recent decades, the uh, executive branch has managed to wrest control of import taxes away from the Congress. So while the Constitution makes it very clear that Congress is supposed to be in charge of taxes, the, 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 the administration can now just come in and raise import taxes without it having to go through Congress. Now, obviously, this is a terrible idea. Rand Paul recently has introduced legislation to say, no, presidents can't just raise taxes without Congress approving it, which I, I, all the people who wrote the Constitution and anybody who was good on revolutionary era uh, type law would agree with that. Uh, but bizarrely, 
in social media, you'll see tons of Trump supporters criticizing Rand Paul for this, saying, no, no, Trump should be able to raise uh, uh, tariffs all he wants and Congress shouldn't have any say in it. And you're just trying to thwart Trump. Well, if these are the people who are telling us that they're for controlled government, they're for, uh, they're for freedom, they're for the rule of law, if that's what counts as rule of law, well, we're in deep, deep trouble. Uh, the only way to go about this is, great, abolish the income tax, and then we could talk about raising tariffs later. But anything other than that just doesn't work, and it's going to end up being a bait and switch, and you're just going to end up paying a lot more taxes.